everyone, Jennifer here. In today's video, I'm going to give you a homeschool end of year recap. How did our second year of homeschooling go? I'm gonna share with you in today's video. Welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. If you are new, my name is Jennifer and I'm the author of the Madame Chic series, as well as the upcoming book, Connoisseur Kids, which comes out in the fall from Chronicle Books. So I have four children and I have an almost nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and a 10-month-old baby. The life is just very full over here and I have homeschooled the older two children, my daughters, for the past two years. and. Uh, I definitely wanted to come on here and update you on how it went because I've gotten a lot of requests. I know a lot of homeschool moms watch this channel. So I thought I would share with you how it went. So Ben and I recently went to the great homeschool convention here in Southern California, and we both loved it. I love looking through curriculum and looking at the different vendors and just different learning opportunities that are there, as well as listening to the speakers and going to the concerts. So we just had a great time. So I learned a lot this year, and um, that's the thing about homeschooling. I think the longer you do it, the more you refine it, the more you learn about what works right for your family and whatnot. So we used a pretty uh, a dry, kind of academically rigorous curriculum this year, and there were pros and cons to that. So before we get into that, let me tell you what our schedule was. We homeschool four days a week, and one day a week the children go to uh, the campus for their private satellite program. So there they have science, PE, um, they have chapel, and just all sorts of social opportunities. All of their friends are there, and we have all these field trips that go through that, um, as well as other special fun events. So that's what they do uh, one day a week, and then the other four days we are homeschooling. So they thrived this year, uh, both academically and socially, but academics were excellent. I just got their standardized test scores back and I know a lot of people don't put weight in those test scores uh, but you know I'll be honest with you they are important to me because I, I want to know um, if they're retaining this information and if they're able to translate it from the platform of the school that I'm teaching them to a totally independent third-party uh, system to see are they gaining knowledge? Are they having critical thinking skills? So um, they both just scored so well on these tests. And again, Ben and I and our families are just so blown away and pleased by their results because they show the national average and then they show where your child is and um, the girls are doing great. So that is really good news. The most exciting thing from this past year was that uh, I taught my daughter how to read. So my first grader really took off with reading and I started in kindergarten with her and um, you know, it's slow going and, and teaching reading can be very tedious. It's just something that you just need to gently uh, approach every single day, I would say. I was gonna say attack it, but no, you approach it every single day and you know you never allow it to get frustrating and just it's a beautiful thing you know and she wanted to read so much like uh, her older sister so my older daughter is just a voracious reader and she just burns through books and isn't that wonderful when your child loves to read so my younger daughter wanted to do that too at night she wanted to read books as well so she was really motivated to learn and she did learn this year and so now she is also a voracious uh, reader which is awesome so that was the best, the biggest highlight of the year was teaching her how to read. I couldn't believe it and I suddenly felt capable because I thought, how can I teach my child to read? That is hard to do. But just pair it with the curriculum or seasoned parents might not use a curriculum to teach how to read, but just go with it and they will learn and it's amazing. So she is uh, really a wonderful reader. Socially, it's been wonderful as well. In fact, I find that there are more social opportunities in homeschooling um, than there were when we weren't homeschooling because I think the homeschooling community is, is very tight-knit. You become close friends with these families that you have in common and there is always an opportunity to go on a play date or a field trip or what they do through their private satellite program. Uh, the girls also do piano and we do American Heritage Girls and that's every two weeks and there's so many things with that as well that I found it was almost too much where uh, there were some weeks where we just had so much planned. I thought this is not good and I'm a homebody. And so I thought I need to work on staying home more and less social activities. So 
that answers the question that many people have. Well, what about socialization? So it's simply not an issue for us. Um, and our children are very well socialized, I would say. So another big thing for me this year was just delving more into the philosophy of Charlotte Mason. I know that there's a lot of Charlotte Mason homeschoolers out there, so if you are or you love that philosophy, leave us a comment down below. But Charlotte Mason was a British educator at the turn of the century, and um, Karen Andriola and her husband Dean really brought Charlotte Mason's books to America, and they're wonderful. I can leave uh, Karen's books down below. She's got some great books on the Charlotte Mason philosophy, and of course Charlotte Mason's own books, um, which I can leave down below too. But it's the idea of cultivating your child's tastes toward uh, the beautiful and surrounding them with uh, beautiful music, beautiful art, nature study, uh, just rich education, poetry. A lot of the education revolves around reading living books, so classics, uh, just beautiful literature. Um, narration, oral narration, copy work, and all of that. So we are really delving into that and we're going to be going more into Charlotte Mason for next year, incorporating nature studies and all sorts of wonderful things. So if you'd like to see some Charlotte Mason inspired videos, by the way, it, they're not just for homeschoolers. These are things that you can incorporate in your own home. When your child says, mom, I'm bored, you know, you can have some ideas of what to do with your children. Um, right now, this summer, we are reading The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Let's see if you can see this. This book belonged to me. And it is such a good book and the language is so good. And yes, it is, it is challenging language, right? But my um, first grader, who's going to be a second grader now, you know, I thought, is this over their heads? Because it's pretty, you know, it's difficult. She, totally gets it and she would ask me questions about what was going on and, and she understood. So I'm pleased because I'm cultivating their tastes toward finer literature and that's something I've been wanting to do because some of the books they read are, you know, really immature books, kind of dumbed down books, um, but they like those types of books. So I think it's a good to uh, introduce them to beautiful literature um, and art as well. So we are doing art study, nature study, and um, reading living books and all of that. So I am really excited to move forward into this next school year. We are keeping the same math curriculum. That worked really well for them and I loved it. That is my homeschooling end of year recap. It went really well. Uh, what I would like to do for next year, I do of course have a lot of improvements to make. And so my main thing is distraction. I tend to be very distracted, especially with my work and so one thing that I would like to change next year is that from the hours of 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I would like to just focus on the children and homeschooling them. And I won't touch my work at all, which will be very hard for me. I mean, maybe if there's a break in there, which there, we do have breaks, I might go in and check a few things. But I just want to be very present for them and want my mind to be there. Now, of course, we try to finish by 12 noon, but sometimes it goes over. But that's my commitment is from the hours of 9 to 12 uh, to just be totally present uh, for them. And we're going to be starting preschool for my son. Nothing rigorous, just, you know, he wants to like join us. So <laughs> he's going to have little activities and little worksheets that he's just begging for. So uh, preschool for him is going to be fun as well. I know a lot of people wanted to know how do I do school with young kids as well? Well, the baby takes a long nap in the morning and as long as that works out, it's really working out for us. So we get to do school while the baby's napping. My older son hangs around with us. I usually give him something to do. Yes, he is disruptive, but we work around it. That's just family life, you know? So um, it's just not that big of a deal. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you homeschool, I would love to hear from you. I love hearing from the homeschool moms. Please leave me a comment down below or if you're interested in it, or even if you're not homeschooling, I would still love to hear from you just about what you've uh, been enjoying doing with your children academics wise or, or cultivating their taste toward art. So definitely leave us a comment down below. And I just wanna thank you today for joining me on The Daily Connoisseur. If you are new, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I will see you in my next video. Bye.